Drunk and unsteady, 125-pound Scott Hudgens held up the sock a Hamilton County corrections officer had ordered him to remove. Oh, you mother... Oh, man. Hudgens says he had never seen the recorded beating he received at the Justice Center two years ago until we showed it to him. They did that to me? They did that to you. I mean, a 100-pound guy, drunk? Them dudes need to be... I want to... Them people need to be fired. No one was fired. The Nine on Your Side I-Team discovered the Hudgens incident as part of a five-month-long I-Team investigation of discipline in the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office. Our investigation reviewed video recordings of use of force incidents, somebody. audio recordings of interviews with witnesses, and an examination of roughly 2,000 documents, including personnel files, internal affairs investigations, and disciplinary actions in the Sheriff's Office. Records obtained by the I-Team show the Sheriff's Office had disciplined 14 current officers for violating the use of force policy since Sheriff Neal took office in 2013. Four of them were suspended. Three officers received written reprimands. Seven officers got counseling letters, the lowest level of discipline. Last year, an internal investigation determined corrections officer Randall Spence used excessive force when he punched an inmate in the face after the inmate was already under control. The bloodied inmate later told the I-team that he received a broken nose and busted tooth. Spence received a counseling letter. No one would tell me what happened. In the case of Scott Hudgens, officers reported that he was verbally abusive, threatened them, and threw his sock at an officer. An internal investigation concluded the officer who smacked him across the face did not violate the use of force policy, but the punch thrown by corrections officer Sanford Spate was excessive force because Hudgens was already under control when Spate hit him. Spate was suspended for 15 days. The disciplinary action filed in Spate's personnel file five months later reported that Hudgens was not injured. I was not injured. I was knocked plum out. The internal affairs investigation report also noted that Hudgens wasn't hurt, even though a medical report included in the internal investigation revealed Hudgens was cut and bruised. I think I got hurt pretty good. When excessive force is used, it's critically important to hold the officers accountable. The I-Team shared our findings with civil rights attorney Al Gerhardstein. He did not represent anyone identified in the incidents mentioned in this story. But Gerhardstein has represented clients in three federal lawsuits filed against Sheriff Neal and the officers in those unrelated incidents involving use of force. There's a very, very uh, low-level discipline for what appears to be some very, very serious matters. The I-Team also provided the records we obtained from the Sheriff's Office to Christine Cole, the Vice President and Executive Director of the Crime and Justice Institute in Boston. She is a nationally recognized expert on law enforcement best practices. I was able to look at a videotape. That video, recorded at the Justice Center nine months ago, shows corrections officer Jason Mize pushing a 61-year-old inmate headfirst into a concrete half wall. An internal affairs investigator described the victim as frail. Mize, on the other hand, was praised by supervisors for, quote, looking good in his uniform and for being extremely fit. After the inmate fell, Mai slammed the cell door so hard it didn't close. Then he left the inmate moaning on the floor of the cell. Records show the inmate was bleeding profusely from his head and had a broken hip. He was treated by a nurse and taken to the hospital. It looks as if it's a pretty egregious um, use of force case. The internal investigation determined Mize lied about the incident and used excessive force. Internal records show Major Charmaine McGuffey, the commander of the Court and Jail Services Division, wanted Mize arrested and fired. It was the fourth time the sheriff's office determined Mize had violated the policy involving force. In 2008, the sheriff's office determined Mize was too aggressive when he punched an inmate in the face. Mize received a counseling letter. Two months later, he was laid off. 
Former Sheriff Simon Lease recalled Mize in March 2011. In 2012, records show Mize violated use of force policy again. A lieutenant mentioned Mize's patterns that were cause for concern, but Mize still received another counseling letter. In 2013, after Neal became sheriff, records show Mize hit an inmate with six to seven knee strikes, including several to his head, injuring the inmate. Mize was suspended for three days. The agency has a responsibility to deal with these things in a consistent, um, predictable, uh, timely uh, fashion. Um, and, and I don't think they've lived up to their responsibility. The sheriff's office referred the 2016 pushing incident to the Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office. But prosecutors declined to present the case to a grand jury. Mize resigned on February 25th. I wonder why my face hurt. I wonder why my ribs hurt. You know, no one would tell me. For victims of excessive force, the most basic question is why. I did not do nothing to deserve that. I handed the dog to the man. Sheriff Neal declined to be interviewed for our report. In a statement, he said, we take all disciplinary matters very seriously, and we feel we reach the appropriate level of discipline. The sheriff's office says former corrections officer Jason Mize was in the discipline process when he resigned. Mize did not respond to requests for a comment. The prosecutor's office also declined to comment on why it didn't present evidence to a grand jury on the most recent incident involving Mize. The officers found to be in violation of Sheriff Neal's use of force policy referred us to an attorney who also declined to comment on their cases.